Yo, 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 yo. What's up, all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v -v 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 vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman? How the hell are you? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? You're always I'm cold. I'm always cold. <laughs> we just said before we started the show that I think I don't have a, um internal thermometer my body doesn't have one <laughs> i'm cold when no one else is cold there it is hey everybody out there in the world hopefully you're smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show and mrs weedman and i are about to get normal we're gonna smoke some rainbow belts and uh the stream was given to me by a friend of mine looking forward to trying it never had rainbow belts before and it's a indica cannabis strain made from crossing moon bow or moon bow with Skittles, 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 with a Z, Skittles. The effects <laughs> of rainbow belts are mostly calming. Consumers say the strain offers a euphoric high that leaves you feeling happy and relaxed. Rainbow All belts right. is the strain here I'm smoking. Is, uh, we're smoking is 19.7% THC, making the strain an ideal choice for people who like that mild THC tolerance and have that mild THC tolerance. So rainbow belts has a sedating quality, so it's best to enjoy this strain during the evening hours. The flavor and aroma of this strain may remind you of a sweet and fruity candy. Medical marijuana patients choose rainbow belts to relieve symptoms associated with insomnia. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> we get to sleep during the show. <laughs> this strain is bred um, uh, locally here in Illinois. I got it from a friend of mine who works in the industry, so which is great. Feelings are talkative, euphoric, and giggly. Some of the negatives are anxious, headache, and paranoid. Uh, flavors are tropical, uh, tree fruit, and sweet, and... Uh, a lot of people say it helps with stress, depression, and insomnia. Hmm. So good stuff. I like that. Don't you, Mrs. Wee Main? Yeah. <laughs> How's it taste? I have no taste buds. Well, today. how does it smell? It smelled pretty good. Does it smell nice? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What do we got going on with eight decades coming we up here have a lot. next week? Yeah, I'm gonna pass you the joint and yeah. I'll get I'll get talking. But what do we got going on, on the website? Yeah, um, on our website, on our web store, I should say, um, everything site wide, our entire shop will be twenty percent off for. Um, well, we haven't really decided the dates yet, but we're gonna be launching some codes on Thanksgiving. Well, Green we'll, Wednesday. Yeah, but we'll probably let the sale ride from <laughs> oh, like yeah. Wednesday through Sunday. Oh, type yeah, of absolutely. Thing. 100%. But it, we'll have some promo codes. So be sure to check our uh, Instagram handle, Eight Decades. And uh, like I said, 20% off site wide. And we always do uh, free shipping over $50. And I think an important thing to point out is that although we are always advertising our smoke set, because the intention is that those pieces are. Uh, used together because they're made to look great together and work great together, but they can be bought a la carte. You don't have to buy a whole smoke set. So if it's not in your budget to throw 150 bucks at it, uh, this rolling tray is only 50 bucks. The ashtray is 45 and the multi-tool is 65 and 25% off with three free shipping. 20% off. 20% uh, off with free shipping. <laughs> Look at me giving the, giving it all away. <laughs> uh, it's a good, it's a really good value. I would not say it's a good deal. They're really good products. They cost a little extra, but they you're are buying luxury, really quality high quality products. products. 100%. So check it out. Watch our social media for the week and uh, some fun sales will be happening. Yeah. And there's clothing on there. Eight decades clothing. Uh, if you're uh, uh, someone who loves a, a consumer of weed, there's weed man uh, clothing. There is hats. There's scarves. Pins, there's pins, stickers, stickers, tote bags, tote bags. What the hemp else? clothing is embroidered. Oh, yeah. The, the hemp clothing is amazing. It's a, it's really oh, great. Yeah, Again, also, it's, it's pricey. So grab it while it's 20% off. It's, yeah. You're going to. You're going to love that stuff. It's about quality with it's, us. We didn't yeah. want to buy cheap T-shirts. We bought hemp clothing. Uh, we Organic cotton clothing. We also have steamrollers on there. We have grinders. What else? Am I missing anything? We've got all sorts of goodies. you got to check it out. Check it out. Check you it also out. can read about Mr. and Mrs. Weedman on our bio, too. So kind of fun. And you can check out the podcast notes on there, too, which is awesome. So Mrs. Weedman, this is not bad. It's it not tastes bad. nice. I'm looking forward to feeling normal. Did you uh, mm -hmm. also, we got a lot of stuff going on next week. We do. Uh, actually, this Thursday, we have what? This Thursday, we are going to Profesh Sesh. Yes. So that is High Focus Media. Uh, their Profesh Sesh is happening in Lincoln Park on the 16th from 6 to 9 p.m. 
at the Never Have I Ever bar. Um, super fun time. They've got Stizzy, Chiba Hut, uh, High Focus Media, uh, The Botanist. So some good uh, brands being represented there and always a fun time. Yeah. You go get Stony. You have some maybe a cannabis cocktail. Maybe no cocktails, just hang out and chill with Come friends. Come by and find and Mr. and Mrs. Weedman and yeah. smoke a joint with us. I always got joints on me and doinks. <laughs> it's an industry night for the cannabis community. Yes. Yeah, so that's on this Thursday, the 16th. Super fun. And then? Then we have, uh, we are going to be vendors at two events over the weekend um, after Thanksgiving. So on November 25th from 2 to 9 p.m., we're going to be at the Quick E-Mart. Uh, that's being uh, hosted by Stay High and Baked Flour. It's an 18 and older uh, vendor event. And there's going to be DJs. There's going to be vendors, tattoo artists, all sorts of fun stuff. It's going to be super cool. It's free to get in. It's at the Stan Mansion in Logan Square on the north side of Chicago. That's going to be fun. That's on the 25th. We'll be a vendor there again. And then we're going to do the super fun event called Dab's Giving. And that's being hosted by Lil Bean and Bob's Exotics. So you could go to their uh, Instagram to get more details. Uh, location is not released, but I believe it's like in Deerfield, Illinois. There's going to be vendors, food trucks, live music, live art, and more. And we will be a vendor at that as well. So uh, some come find opportunities us. to come hang out. And smoke some weed with smoke us. Smoke some weed with us. <laughs> yeah. We'll and be get together the with events. the community. Yeah. yeah, come hang out with us, please, and say hello and introduce yourself. And uh, if we've never met you before, I've talked to you on, on social media. But I'd love to get high with you. And uh, I'll uh, come ask me for a joint and we'll smoke. So I'm looking forward to shaking hands, kissing babies, and giving hugs. <laughs> <laughs> 18 and old, older. No babies there. No babies. No babies. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got going on? Suits, season four, we're almost done with. Crazy. Lewis Litt, just killing it. Lewis Litt's a monster. <laughs> monster right now. <laughs> the guy's on fuego. Ma, Grandma Weed, uh, Ma 420, as I call her now, we told her about it, and she blew through all nine seasons in like a week. I don't know how she did it. And they're heavy. Weeks. They're yeah. heavy. See, they're like 40-minute episodes, yeah. and there's like, like tw it feels like forever, mm. like probably 20 episodes per season. This season four, I really liked. There was a lot of, I didn't know how they were going to keep it going. And, uh, and, uh, really good season four. Uh, we're almost done. But Lewis Lit, boy, holy <laughs> smokes. Beast. But he's still stupid. Is, 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 he gets his way to the top and he still makes fuck ups. He's always like one step away from like just killing it. Yeah. You know, and like he, he fucks he, up. He brings these great ideas. He, they, you know, people will compliment him that he's a great attorney. And then he just does some stupid, stupid fucking shit. thing. Stupid shit. Yep. Just dumb. Oh, dumb, dumb, silly dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah. Tricks so, are for kids. Yeah, we're almost done. Couple more, five more seasons. I can't believe I just said that. Five more seasons. So, and uh, almost done. It took us like yeah. six months to get through four seasons. <laughs> no, we'll be talking about long. this next year. At the same it is time. a long. I mean, there's 15 episodes per season. That's long. It's 15. Four, Seems yeah. like more. Yeah, there's 50, maybe there is, but I I keep on seeing 15. So, but it's just a long. Now most seasons are eight episodes. These were fifteen episodes a season. So if you look, if you're watching it, we probably watch it three, four days a week, right? So I'm getting all tingly inside. <laughs> wow, well, oh, from the weed. From the weed. I was like, oh, what's all going tingling. on? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's a good season. If you haven't caught it, watch it on Netflix. It's really good. And then I heard the final season nine. You have to buy it on Amazon Prime, Prime which is kind of. So kind of silly. But what else? Oh, the weather outside is not frightful right now. No, it's amazing. <laughs> it's not frightful at all. It's like we it got 65 degrees. Today. I was out in Joliet today, right? Visiting visiting some 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 peeps out there. And uh there was a guy that walked out with a tank top and shorts on and flip-flops. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, it's 65. It's not 95. That's so Chicago, though. But that's Joliet. That's You'll not see, even you Chicago. You see that in January that's when there's jo like. That's Joliet. Yeah, but you, that's just a thing. You know? I, it is. It's just a but thing. It was, there's I, always that guy. But the guy wasn't like, usually you see like a guy that's a little heavier. You know, yeah. it's got some some thickness to him so he can, so it doesn't get cold, right? Yeah, he's insulated. This person was thinner than I was. That's a skinny guy. That's what I'm saying. 
I'd be freezing my ass off. Maybe he off. just came from the gym and he didn't bring a jacket. No, either. did not come from the gym. Hmm. Was not a gym work. I could tell. Nope. <laughs> okay. Nope. Just, <laughs> He's I, just crazy. I, just cold. I'm wearing jeans, a, a shirt, and a, and a hoodie. Sometimes I got my hood on. I just saw a person in, it was like a snowsuit, but it was like made out of like a sleeping bag. <laughs> I was like, I need that thing. I'll wear it around the house all day. My, I'll, I'll look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow guy. <laughs> <laughs> Stay Puff. <laughs> isn't, the, isn't he called the Stay Puff? Yeah, we did have a good. Uh, speaking of marshmallow, you made a phenomenal Sunday on Sunday for us. Oh yeah, that was good. Ugh. Yeah, I'm, I just pulled up a picture of the Stay Puffed. P-U-F-T. P-U-F-T. I'm going to look like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow it's Man. S-T-A-Y-P-U-F-T, right? Yeah, stay yeah, yeah. Puffed. Puffed. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, did, you did make a phenomenal <laughs> Sunday with marshmallow and car- caramel. and I we, didn't make anything. I served well, it to you. you but, I took it out of containers. But, but you it put it together. Really I don't know if any of you live in a in a city that has Andy's oh, frozen custard. So good. But they have, you could buy a quart with two sides. Yes. And it's like a like a shit ton of topping. So you, we always get caramel and marshmallow. No, you've been getting fudge and you asked me what did I want marshmallow? You wanted sprinkles. No, or no, you wanted marshmallow. I wanted marshmallow. I don't want, I'm not a big fudge guy. Like, I don't know, just too much between caramel and fudge together, just too much. You need that marshmallow as a breakup, you know? So that's why I like caramel marshmallow and then the sp- then sprinkles. <laughs> sprinkles. Got to have a little crunch. But you made a phenomenal Sundays. Oh, it was so good. The only thing we should have done is we have those Italian cherries. Uh, oh, we should have put one of those on there. there. Not cheap maraschino cherries, which I did love as a kid. These were the, these are those ones the you put. The good cocktail cherries. Yes. The, those imported yes. deep red. You need to put one of those on. You need to put one of those on top for me next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, but phenomenal. If you have not had Andy's before, if it, I don't know if it's just a Chicago thing or an Illinois thing, Andy's, but if there's Andy's custard in your area, if not, the second best thing I would say would be Culver's then. The next closest thing you can get. Culver's custard is not bad, right? Would yeah. you say? Yeah, Culver's is good. Yeah, so but that's more of a Midwest place too. Yeah, but if if you don't have an Andy's by you and you want you want to try a good sunday get culver's with marshmallow and caramel and sprinkles and the cherry and you'll thank us later especially yeah. when you're stoned as we were the other night we ate like <laughs> we you put a lot of scoops in there too man i ate that whole bowl <laughs> when i got done with you i'm like just put one scoop in there from now on moving forward because <laughs> i don't do much dairy you know i splurge every once in a while you know and have a have an ice cream sunday or you know some ice cream and uh yeah that was delicious <laughs> <laughs> you ready to get the show started? I'm ready. You, you ready? ready? I'm ready. I'm stoned, but I'm ready. Mood altering, pain altering, but not mind altering. And what do I mean by that? And what does this article mean by that? Uh, microdosing with cannabis. We've talked about microdosing in the past here and there, but uh, never about like just more of a like a start precaution you know if you're not used to cannabis start low and go slow start with two milligrams or five milligrams you know but we never really got into why microdosing is also important for the mind and for for your mood you know like we smoke every day right miss we man we yeah. smoke a lot of weed you yeah. you're doing that test right now every night for uh that little yeah survey. i'm involved in a survey yes we'll talk about it yeah. in a minute here but you're you do a survey every night and they ask you like how many milligrams of flour are you smoking you know per night right and you're saying that you smoke a full bowl would you say they like the equivalent yeah. of yeah yeah so what's and then been... it'll ask you if you've had any used topicals if you've used uh, other cannabinoid Ad- uh, pro- like prominent products if you've used cbd dominant products if you've done edibles so you have to like all the categories they ask you right and then you kind of answer a, a couple of quick yeah multiple choice answers 100%. on it's a nice little nice little survey they're doing it's easy it's quick uh but so they do ask about edibles and the dosage that you think you took so in the past few decades cannabis has gone from something offered to you back when you were younger in high school or in college after school as i always say dob boy was was the back alley dude uh to something that your friend from yoga class raves about and while the stigma around cannabis has changed a little bit maybe a lot maybe in the middle but 
I wouldn't say it's it's ever changing. Let's just say the stigma. The plan is basically the same. Sure, growers are trying to top uh, top better plants, better THC, more more crystals, more trichomes, more terps, more flavor, more flavonoids, more more esters and flavorants and all the stuff. They're trying to get you to get it all. You know, now compare when I was in, in, in high school and younger, my younger years and just smoked weed to get high and didn't know anything else about it because I liked the way it made me feel. That was probably about 95% of the reason why I smoked weed is because it made me feel pleasant. <laughs> it made me feel good. It took like it was just a nice overall feeling when I got high and it made life easier to think clearly. Does that make sense? that's even a word clearly <laughs> so um while all the plants uh while all the components of the plant can provide therapeutic benefits one component thc is the most responsible for the high feelings associated with cannabis use uh, now look at that feeling when you get when you smoke weed like that feeling you get i love that feeling and while it takes less thc nowadays to achieve it uh then then you Years past, the, euphor the euphoria is definitely a desired part of the experience for a lot of people. I love the experience of weed because every time I smoke weed, there's always just something new that happens or I think of something new or the experience of something that you might have done something years ago and you tried it high and it was like, wow, that experience was way better high. Have you, You've said that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. So... um you may be most familiar with the term microdosing as it relates to psychedelics, LSD, mushrooms, that stuff. But there is microdosing in cannabis. And while the research on microdosing psychedelics is kind of mixed, the concept is that it is possible to get benefits from mind-altering substances without altering your mind. When using cannabis strictly for a therapeutic benefit while avoiding the mind-altering qualities, there's a few good things to consider. Cannabinoid ratio. THC is the chemical most responsible for getting you high, the mind altering effects of cannabis. Less THC means less chance of feeling high. However, THC is effective at addressing pain and other medical symptoms like appetite. So eliminating, eliminating it all together may not provide the desired therapeutic effects. As mentioned, the cannabis plant has a, a symphony of components that work in harmony to provide relief. So choosing products with the whole plant inside is important. The cannabinoid ratio refers to the amount of cannabinoids present in the product in relation to each other. For example, if a tincture says it is a 5 to 1 CBD to THC, that means there is 5 times the CBD versus THC in that product. Or for every milligram of THC, there's 5 milligrams of CBD. Just in case if you didn't know ratios, sometimes ratios and sometimes numbers are confusing, especially if you only see the numbers and you've never been explained what it was, you know, from an, uh, a consultant or an educator or somebody at the dispensary or what they write on the packaging. So sometimes it just says the numbers and do you know what those numbers are actually for? So... Sometimes there are even three or even four cannabinoids present. You'll see a lot of new edibles that are coming out. Uh, I've seen in Oklahoma for years now, you know, where there was four cannabinoids in one in one gummy. So, um, so you might see something like a twenty to five to five to one. So let's explain this: twenty milligrams of CBD, five milligrams of CBG, which is the mother of all cannabinoids. Five milligrams of CBN, which is when your THC gets like a fine wine. It's aged. So five milligrams of CBN. Please don't take more than 10 milligrams of CBN because I am just telling you you're going to have nightmares. Um, so just keep that on the level with CBN. If you're not used to CBN, start very low, two to five milligrams, and then work your way in. Okay, and then there might be one milligram of THC. So twenty five five one. Okay, if it can be tough to find raw flour with a varied and balanced cannabinoid ratio, it would be great though. So unless you're taking one very small hit from a pipe, there are other methods of ingestion that might be better for microdosing. Method of ingestion for microdosing for me for flour is just taking one hit off of a joint or one hit off of my bowl instead of smoking the whole bowl like I do at night. <laughs> but if I wanted to smoke during the day, if I needed it, 
and for pain or if I needed it for just anxiety or stress, I just take one, like a, a pen. You've always said you like smoking a, a vaporizer pen, right? But I don't a love how I feel, not not the high or anything, not cannabis related. I mean, more like chest, like I feel like the vapes are uh, irritating to my lungs. But you have throat. lung issues, though, yes, too. I have, yeah. So. But, um, yes, I do like the convenience of them. I like but you to like it because yeah. you could take one hit Just off little, of it. Just little, and you could take a little, You could little take puff, a microdose and right, be done. No big deal. And then you put it off the side, and you're good for a while because mm -hmm. you microdosed it. I've mm -hmm. seen you do it. Mm -hmm. So you're not hitting the the cartridge pen three or four times you hit it once blow a nice little and you're good mm -hmm. right yeah it's just totally. a microdose for you so just remember it that it doesn't I always have the to... grocery store today <laughs> <laughs> so you have to realize you don't need it you don't need to like get baked and blazed right. and, and high and i didn't stoned. even feel anything right but... it got you even keeled to go tolerate mm -hmm. the fucking pain in the ass grocery store that's right <laughs> i needed more at the end <laughs> After all our dumb sale stickers all over the place. <laughs> method of ingestion. While smoking flour is still the preferred method of most people, other products like tinctures, edibles, allow consumers to choose a more balanced effect due to the ability to produce a variety of cannabinoid ratios. Tinctures are particularly a favorite among those looking to microdose cannabis because not only do they come in a variety of carefully measured cannabinoid ratios when taken under the tongue, the effect occurs within about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. This is very useful for someone like the, the writer or, or Mrs. Weedman who is treating a sudden breakthrough in pain. Right? Or That's anxiety right. or yeah. going to have to deal with a stressful situation where there's going to be a lot of people. And if you don't like being around a lot of people, weed kind of takes that away. As mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. you know, where you can be around people. I'm not saying have conversations, but being around m more than 10 people, let's just say. <laughs> you have a number. Huh? You've got like a, a Sometimes. Count. Sometimes you need it. <laughs> nope. You know? can only do nine. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or waiting in lines at the grocery oh, store. God. Sucks if you're not high. <laughs> Because then you just get in the zone. I mean, now everyone's got cell phones, yeah, so no one gives phone. a fuck, you know? So there are also edibles that add, that and beverages that come in low THC options with just one or two milligrams per dose. But you should also read the labels because unless it says otherwise, these products can take 60 to 90 minutes to take effect. Also, they may be made with THC isolate or distillate, which is pure THC. While this can produce an effect, a full spectrum or a whole plant product represents the entire symphony, not just one instrument. Um, minimal effective dose. Once you find a product you want to try, the next step is to determine your minimum effective dose or med. The med refers to the amount you take where you achieve the therapeutic effects without any unwanted effects. If your goal is to experience the mood, pain, sleep, or appetite altering effects of cannabis without the mind altering ones, then you are looking for the dose that does precisely that. This can take some time to figure out, and there are apps like um, like Tetragram on here that allow you to record your dose and outcomes so that you can dial in your med, M, capital M, capital E, capital D. So Tetragram, um, T-E-T-R-A-G-R-A-M, if you want to keep track. So try it out. You never know. Start low and go slow and learn the symphony of cannabis, right? Whoa, did you just make that up? No, oh. I wish I did. But <laughs> wow. in two years, I'll tell everybody that's mine. Yeah. Give credit to Green State and the writer of Green State who wrote that. But in about two years, I'll say it a lot enough. And usually I it usually if I have a good quote. line. Like I, I was at a I was at somewhere and I was like, I was talking to a bud tender. I was like, I'm just trying to bring my vibe to your tribe. And and they're like, I like that. <laughs> they're like, can I use it? I'm like, yeah, just give me credit for about two years and then you can tell you tell people you made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Right? That's your, your form of copywriting. That, that's it. Give credit where it's credit's due, and then all of a sudden you just change. It, it's like telling a story 50 times. It gets better the 50th time. Yeah, because you know when uh, to, you evolve like, the it. inflection. Yes. Like, yeah. you know, I'm, that's why I've always been a good storyteller, because I can tell a story. Where you need some more details. Yes. Where you need to just breeze through. Yes, where you need to put the exclamation point, and when you need to reel it in, and when you need to know when to end the story. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes too. you have to tell a story shorter. Yes. And sometimes you've got time to, like, people are captivated and the they have time. The thing about being stoned is you have to captivate people in a story quick, exciting, and fast because if they you forget draw, what, They forget you're having a conversation. Or they fade away. Yeah, you, they fade out. Yes. So when I'm sitting with people and they're telling me stories, I, I love hearing stories, but when I'm stoned, 
be quick. Mm -hmm. Like that 10 minute story, cut it down to about five. Yeah, because about minute three and a half, you're like, oh, shoot. I'm so stoned. I'm supposed to be listening. Right. Yeah, you fade out. Yeah. And, you're, and then all of a sudden, sometimes you're like, oh, fuck, are they listening to me? Even if you're like, they even know if I'm you're not interested. Listening. <laughs> yeah, even if, like quicken it up, shorten it up. And I'm, sometimes I know I've done it too, so I'm not perfect. But some, I know when I'm talking to a bunch of fucking stoners, burners, and potheads, it's like, keep it quick. Yeah. You know, and then, and then <laughs> shut up. You know, and me like, and then let them let somebody else talk because the thing about stoners, they'll fade away like quick, and all of a sudden it's like I gotta go to the bathroom because you're so high and you want to pay attention, but then you feel rude that you're not paying attention because so you're you so need stoned. To just bow out of the conversation. Sometimes it happens. I've done it. I've like, oh, I gotta pee. You know, where the bathroom is. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, but when I'm my if I'm microdosing is a different story. Like if I'm not really that high, you know. But if I'm stoned, like we go outside with a bunch of people and we smoke like one or two joints and we come back in, we're pretty high. It's not always easy to be around a big conversation. It's yeah. fun to talk yeah. and say hi and walk by and say hello, how you doing, how you been, small talk, this and that. But if you're deep conversation, sometimes when you're stoned, it's too much. Whoo, you know. It just is deep conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, I love talking to people. I love hearing stories, but sometimes it's just when you're too baked, man, you just want to just chill for a second. You need to get your mind, like, especially just coming back in when you, when it all hits you at once. Yeah. That's not the time to have those big <laughs> stories when you're outside having the smoke sesh is like the funnest time to tell stories and hear people's stories, you know, mm -hmm. but when you first get that first peak of the high, that's the last thing I want to do is, <laughs> is tell a story and hear a story. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, I'm yeah. sure there's people We've out all there. Been there. Oh yeah, I'm sure stuck there's... in stuck in the person's story, listening to them, or you're the one that you're like, oh, I just totally told way too long of a story. Oh yeah, you know it too. You know, <laughs> yeah, it. you know it. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I lost everybody. Yeah. So you just got it. Just everybody out there in the world, if you're not stoned and you're talking to somebody who's stoned, they're not being short and sweet. Keep it short. Yes, they're not being rude. Their attention span is not there yet. Later on. Maybe about 30. Oh, sometimes I can have like really like right when you're stoned, like right when it when you're fucking baked. I think baked. it depends on the strain. Yeah, that's that's true too. And how high you are. Yeah. At the end of a night, like when you like have just like back to back continued smoking all night, the later in the evening, the less I'm gonna re remember about a conversation <laughs> and the less interest I am in. Like I can't even have. You're sometimes I can't even have the conversation. That's I why just, stoners. Love I just want quiet and I want to watch. That's people. why stoners, burners, and potheads like being at home, being stoned. Oh, I love people watching. That's not. It's different. Crowd that, watching, but that's different. That's they like being home because they don't have to have long you conversational talk. talks. Yeah. You know. It's in a comfortable situation when you're at home having long conversations versus being out in a crowd. It's just different. It's just it's like you can come to the house here and we could talk all night. Right. But it's that beginning hit. Like when you're like really baked is hard to hold a conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> for me. I, I have nothing to do with this like at all. So I can't tell you how to experience this. I'm a human being, but doesn't have this going on in my human life. But Mrs. Weedman has, so I'm not even gonna read the title. You are. Oh my <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. Are you afraid of the word tampon? No, Mr. not at all. I, I grew up with two. I grew up with all women in my life, so tampons were all over the place. So I'm not scared of saying the word or seeing the they word. They were all over. Well, now that's too much information. <laughs> all right, let's get on with the story, Mr. Weedman. You good? I'm good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you don't like to hear about tampons, then just Fast listen, forward. listen for your potential significant other. If your significant other uh, may need a tampon, you may have some input for your her. mother, your sister, your, your friend, whatever yeah, the ladies. Yes. You could be like, I've got some information for you <laughs> and you're never going to believe what it is. <laughs> so do CBD tampons? Yes, there is such a thing actually help with period pain. We put them to the test. That's not me or Mr. Weedman. That's the article. Uh, the buzz around CBD and its supposed benefits has been on the up over the past few years. And now talk has even turned to CBD tampons. But do they actually work when it comes to helping with savage cramps? And how do you know if they're safe to use? We investigated by putting female health brand Days, D-A-Y-E apostrophe S, CBD infused tampons on trial and digging into the science behind them. First up, let's explain CBD. It's not the same as weed. 
at least not in the way you probably think about weed, for instance, smoking it to get high. The confusion is understandable. CBD is a non-psychoactive compound that's also derived from the cannabis plant. Libby Clark, managing, managing consultant of toxicology at specialist cannabinoids brand Bowden, um, explains, CBD is a cannabinoid that occurs naturally in cannabis plants. It is not psychoactive, which means it won't make you feel high. The high associated with cannabis use comes from THC, which is a different cannabinoid. So, now that we've made it clear that CBD is non-psychoactive, let's discuss what its effects are. CBD is increasingly being used for pain relief, says Dr. Nazreen Morley, a general practitioner and the medical director of Dr. Naz Aesthetics Clinics. There's some research that suggests it can be effective when it comes to pain relief, Research is very much emerging in this space, the expert notes. Currently, the evidence on CBD and its safety and effectiveness is limited, and one problem that some people face is that different products are regulated differently. Clark explains, CBD is regulated in different ways depending on the product type. For example, oils and gummies are regulated by the Food Standard Agency, and then there are specific regulations for cosmetics and intimate care products. So it's vital that you do your due diligence when purchasing anything that claims it contains CBD. However, Day makes it very clear that they've gone to great lengths to ensure their CBD tampons are safe. Sharing general advice from Dr. Morley, uh, Tam Morley, I'm sorry, uh, she says tampons in the UK at least are regulated by the General Product Safety Regulation 2005. So you can generally trust that tampons sold in the UK are safe to use. When you buy any product with CBD, particularly if you're buying online, buy from a reputable retailer in the UK, uh, the pro adds. CBD regulations are different in different countries, and so too are product safety regulations. Cosmetic product, regu cosmetic product regulations and food and drink regulations. If you're considering buying a CBD product, there are also plenty of considerations you should keep in mind. Broughton's uh, Clark recommends looking out for um, clear CBD labeling, the amount of uh, milligrams of CBD, and the strength of the product compared to the CBD percentage. Um, information on lab testing or a website link showing the certificate of analysis. Uh, the Soil Association Organic Standard Badge. Uh, cannabis plants may accumulate pesticides, which aren't used if plants are grown organically. Uh, broad spectrum, spectrum. I'm having struggles. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Am I? <laughs> is it painful to hear me? No, no, not at all. But are you too um, high? Uh, maybe. <laughs> broad spectrum. These products contain other cannabinoids in addition to CBD and may be more effective than pure CBD isolate products. Remember, this advice applies to any time you're shopping for CBD products, not just tampons, especially as CBD is increasingly being incorporated into women's health care and wellness items. Cosmetic doctor and intimate health specialist Dr. Sharon Lakhani, Lakhani explains, while research is ongoing, there is some evidence that suggests CBD might be beneficial for women's health. Research su suggests that CBD could potentially reduce hot flashes and night sweats associated with menopause. It can also help with mood swings, irritability, and fatigue. It may help with some symptoms related to menopause, such as stiffness of joints, migraines, anxiety, and mood, as well as appetite. And it may also improve your sex life once you start to feel better, the pro adds. So how might CBD help with cramps? Well, CBD's anti-inflammatory and analgesic properties may help alleviate menstrual pain and reduce the severity of cramps when applied topically or ingested. It may also be beneficial in reducing the pain of endometriosis, explains Dr. Lakhani. But... Please remember to follow instructions carefully when using topical balms or patches to soothe aches and pains, and avoid intimate areas unless it's specifically stated on the product that it is safe to use in such ways. Uh, CBD oils are intended generally to be absorbed on the tongue or swallowed. No product, unless specifically designed for use internally in intimate areas, should be used as such. 
Always follow the instructions on any cosmetic or supplement product that you buy, advises Dr. Morley. If you're wondering whether you can add CBD oil to tampons you've already purchased, ugh, that sounds awful. <laughs> and guess what? The answer is a firm no. Uh, please do not add your own CBD oil to tampons, says Dr. Lakani. This could upset the internal balance of that bacteria and acids and lead to irritation and infection. Clark adds, it's not recommended to add CBD oil to a tampon. It's unlikely that much of the dose would be absorbed. And CBD oils for oral use haven't been tested on intimate areas. Day Brand offers CBD tampons, and here's what their users are saying. After months of Googling bad period pain remedies, I came across Day to help ease my dreaded PMS symptoms, which range from abdominal cramps, backaches, and sore legs. The CBD-infused tampons almost instantly helped with my usual discomfort. I found myself relaxing and untensing my entire body, knowing something was helping the pain. It felt as though I was dealing with significantly less pelvic pressure, and that transformed my period, making it 10 times more manageable. Another user said, while I'm not a chronic period pain sufferer, I do experience uncomfortable cramps as well as backache. Oh, and not to mention a major case of PMS. So when I caught wind of Day's CBD tampons, I was all for putting them to the test. Initially, I was skeptical. Will they feel different? Will they be uncomfortable? Will they be scented? And to all of these concerns, the answer was no. I tried out Day's Nude, as well as their CBD option, and to say I'm now a fan of both would be an understatement. Admittedly, they do sit a bit pricier uh, than other products, but regardless, let's just say I experienced good relief of symptoms. So, something to look for. But I think that is really important, especially something you're using internally to make sure that it's safe. It's safe. Yes. Yeah. So do your research. Yep. I always wondered this, and I guess I never really thought about it, but donating plasma if you smoke weed. Do you ever think about that? Can you donate blood if you smoke weed? Don't they clear it out, clean it? I have no idea. Because <laughs> I don't know if I've ever donated blood. I don't like needles, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plasma donation can save lives. But can you donate plasma if you smoke weed? According to the United States Department of Health and Human Services, people with rare conditions use treatments and medicines made from plasma donations. It takes 130 plasma donations to treat a person with primary immune deficiency for one year. Wow. One year of hemophilia treatment requires 2,000 plasma donations. Um, key, some key takeaways. Plasma is the liquid part of blood responsible for transporting vital compounds through the body, blood clotting, and immune response. Donated plasma is used to create therapies, medicine, and treat trauma. Donation requirements don't mention uh, cannabis. Certain kinds of synthetic weed contains anti-coagulants ruining plasma. Donation centers can exclude cannabis consumers, but, but many don't. Uh, plasma is the liquid portion of the blood that carries salts, water, and enzymes. It helps transport nutrients, hormones, and proteins where they are needed. Plasma is essential for bringing proteins for blood clotting, bringing revitalization minerals to muscles, and moving the platelets and red blood cells where they need to go. The liquid also plays a crucial role in immune response, providing the immune system with proteins it needs to work. Uh, requirements for donating plasma. The HHS suggests general requirements for donors. They must be 18, weigh at least 110 pounds, be in good health, and test negative for HIV and hepatitis. First timers undergo a medical screening. During the screening, patients who present the high blood with high blood pressure are excluded. Cannabis isn't mentioned. Individual donation centers will set requirements for donating plasma. They will specifically set parameters that disqualifying you from donating. Plasma Lab International has a laundry list of exclusions, including not allowing women who have had sexual contact with a bisexual man to give blood have been incarcerated for at least three months in the last year or have been deferred from other donation centers. The requirements for donating plasma can vary between donation centers, though some conducting drug testing, few have set precedents regarding cannabis consumption and plasma. Can you donate plasma if you smoke weed? 
some plasma centers drug test during the initial medical screening, but not all donation centers test for THC and other cannabinoids. The same goes for synthetic marijuana like K2 or Spice. Uh, Plasma Lab doesn't mention cannabis in its lengthy list of donation exclusions. The American Red Cross doesn't test for the presence of weed before donations of, of, or blood samples after collection. The Red Cross does make it clear that if cannabis consumption has altered someone's decision-making or memory, they should not give blood. However, this note relates to constant rather than avoiding plasma with weed in it. Synthetic marijuana and plasma donations, the Food and Drug Administration leaves it up to the individual donation centers on whether they accept donations with synthetic marijuana. However, particular kinds of synthetic marijuana can contaminate plasma. Uh, so the final verdict, can you donate plasma if you smoke weed? There isn't any known reason why cannabis users shouldn't smoke weed unless it's synthetic. However, individual plasma donation centers have the ability to exclude those who have consumed. It is not wise to make donations while under the influence, though, to maintain the capability to provide consent. Donating plasma is one way to give back. In June of 2023, there was a high need for donations. Uh, can you donate plasma if you smoke weed? Can the rest, this is just people asking and wondering, can rest easy knowing that most donation centers won't test for THC? Just be sure to show up sober to donate. Cool. What is the ah, oh, ah, oh, <laughs> that kind of ah, oh, or when you see something beautiful and like, you go ah, oh. oh. yeah, like that. What's that the feeling? Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, science explains how marijuana inspires awe. Marijuana regulates two subtle but important gateways through which we experience life. Regular cannabis users often report an important side effect of smoking marijuana. Everything in life seems amazing. Pizza becomes heavenly, nature walks seem like you're exploring the Garden of Eden, mediocre Netflix shows elevate to masterful works of art. Now, science explains how marijuana inspires awe. This is by design, your brain's design more specifically. We don't usually talk about awe as an emotion in public. Negative feelings like anger, sadness, and fear uh, crowd the discourse space instead. But awe is an essential ingredient to the experience of being alive. The emotion derives from a novel sensation or moment in your life, a feeling that you can't believe you're lucky enough to witness something you might describe as magical. Awe occurs because of an almond-shaped collection of cell bodies called the amygdala. Previously, you may have heard of the amygdala described as the brain's fear center. That vastly oversimplifies it. The amygdala regulates many of your emotions and behaviors, including pleasurable feelings like awe. As explained by Timon L. Cermak, a psychiatrist who specializes in addiction medicine, one way the amygdala facilitates awe is by organizing incoming stimuli. When an unfamiliar stimuli arrives, for example, wearing a new ring, the amygdala adds a special zing of alertness to the feel of that ring, Cermak writes. This draws our attention to the new sensations on our finger. After a while, when the feel of the ring becomes the unchanging norm, the amygdala stops adding the zing. We accommodate or habituate to the ring's feel, and it falls into the background of our awareness. Guess what disrupts that familiar feeling of the same old, same old? Your body's natural endocannabinoid system, which is triggered by an uptake of cannabinoids, or put simply, by puffing on a joint. It lowers the barrier to what your amygdala, which has a dense collection of cannabinoid receptors, considers novel or new. It then instructs your brain to release neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin, causing pizza to taste like the best thing you've ever had. We dishabituate to the world, and many stimuli rise up out of the background and back into awareness, Cermak writes of this effect. But cannabis also produces awe in a more subtle way. A 2015 study published in Emotion analyzed the relationship between inflammation and negative emotions. Researchers noted that poor mental health often leads to poor physical health. One example was that high inflammation correlated with clinical depression. However, researchers discovered the strongest relationship was between inflammation levels and awe. Why would awe be such a potent predictor of reduced pro-inflammatory cytokines, researchers wrote? One reason 
is that pro-inflammatory cytokines encourage social withdrawal and reduce exploration, which would serve the adaptive purpose of helping an individual recover from injury or sickness. On the other hand, awe is associated with curiosity and a desire to explore, suggesting opposite behavioral responses to those found during inflammation. They added, in this sense, experiences of awe may be part of an integrated response that includes emotional and biological responses that facilitate approach and social exploration. Multiple studies have noted marijuana's anti-inflammatory abilities. It is within reason that by reducing inflammation, cannabis also opens up users to experiencing awe. Whoa. Sometimes. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty awesome. Yeah. Sometimes you hear <laughs> marijuana causing users to feel like a kid again. This can be meant jokingly, but it can also highlight those big-eyed wonders we associate with childhood, how new and abundant life seems. Marijuana helps remind users how full and possible life can be. So, Mr. Weedman, let's smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when when we have gone on trips and been high going to experience, experience stuff. Mm -hmm. Hikes, oh, it, it, it mountains. It totally heightens Their senses pleasure, are so heightened. Like the heightened. pleasure zones. Oh, yeah. I in mean, your brain. It's so nice to be high and ex for the experience stuff. Like everything we've done in the last 10 years, like travel, any kind of travel, now that weed is legal, we don't have to hide it when we're, you know, we go to states that are legal or even if they're not legal and we carry weed everywhere we go. It's like when you go do something, it's wow. Kinda. And there's times where we don't have anything with us. And it's like, imagine how great this would be if we had weed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which really happens anymore. Uh, but that we don't have any. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we always yeah. got weed. But on, us, on the so. occasion. For you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, there's, time, uh, there's just really experiences that, I mean, I don't know. I also don't think that every experience is perfect for weed. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I'll microdose, but. To be high, high, it's not for every. No, it's no, not you're for right everything. on that. It's not yeah. for everything. Microdosing, just having like a little, a little take, take the, the edge, edge off. off. Yeah, but I, I like taking to the be edge high, off. high. There's, there's a time and a place. Yes, yes, and we like being high, high, high. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> high, 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 high. Ohio, so proud of you. Yeah, going recreational, but the uh, governor. And the GOP leaders are going to try to downplay that law and try to take a lot of that stuff out. And one is the home grow. They're going to try to take home grow out. The 12 plants that you're going to be able to grow, Ohio voters. Remember, you voted for that 59%. Okay? Or 56.9% voted for cannabis recreational in your state and the laws that go with it. You voted for it. Do not, do not let them take that home grow away from you. Do not. That is the one thing you need to fight for than anything else because if you can learn how to home grow or like I've said on the show before, share with people and share the tent, you are going to love life. Trust me when I tell you, especially you're going to be growing 12 plants. Oh, don't let them come take this. And when can, when... Can you buy recreational weed? It'll happen. They got to now write all the laws for it and get everything. They, I mean, it'll happen. Just be patient. Okay? So, New York Republicans aim to ban pot billboards and roadside signs. You know, I'm not a big fan of billboards. And I live in a state that fucking you go down 294, it's billboard city, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but... I mean, they do have a purpose. Some people like them. I think they're a waste of money, you know, truly. But, I mean, some people do look at them, and you see a cool one, you remember it. Do I actually go buy this stuff after to remember it? No. But I think there's some funny billboards out there, and there's some good weed billboards out there, you know. Um, so, you know, that's up to you if you like it or not. But, yeah, New York's trying to ban it, so cannabis billboards. New York's cannabis farmers are, are at their breaking point. They are dying there's only 12 dispensaries in the whole state for these farmers to to sell to. They're not going to make it. And then you're really going to be fucked. Because now there's going to be no one 
that's growing weed except for a few. So you really messed this up, New York, so bad, especially these farmers that, that put their heart and soul into their plant. Florida Supreme Court hears arguments in case inside of cannabis legalization will appear in the 2024 ballot, which is total bullshit because they went out and got the signatures for it. And it took a lot of time. And then I read another article today that a Florida Supreme Court justice uh, uh, justice appear open to recreational pot legalization initiative. So we'll just keep an eye on this. And every time we see a new article or see new news or see something, we'll read about it. So, but Florida, you went and got the signatures. Do not let this get messed up. Okay. Oklahoma to revoke 165 marijuana cultivation permits over signage violations. This is just a way now to get rid of a lot of the a lot of the over excess without it being recreational. They're going to look for everything now because there was uh, 8,000, 9,000 cultivation, a lot of illegal cultivation going on in Oklahoma too. So, uh, yes, I would definitely, you know, kind of, um, you know, with Oklahoma being the way it is, 165 permits being lost. I mean, that's just people don't want to, they're not making money either in Oklahoma either. So they probably can't pay for anything. So, um, Indiana, I posted something today on my story. You are surrounded by legal States. Now, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, Kentucky will be medical in 2025. You are surrounded by cannabis states. Indiana, get with the program and at least go medical and put a, put a, a, a let people home grow 12 plants. And then don't worry about it because people can home grow. Who cares about recreation? You know, just let people do a caregiver program too. Make it right. So, and you can't vote on the matters yourselves. So it has to go through just uh, it has to go through legalization through the uh, Hoosier, Hoosiers and the Republican lawmakers are standing against it. So, Indiana, you need to fight for it because you are now just going to be able to go anywhere you want and buy it except for in your own state. So, crazy. Uh, support for cannabis legalization reaches a record high of 70%, including strong majority of Republicans' Gallup poll shows. Pretty cool. Maryland did ninety million in legal cannabis sales in October. Pretty good. That's good. Yeah. So, former FDA official says he'd be shocked if DA doesn't reschedule marijuana by twenty twenty four election. I don't know. We'll see. It's a little bit of ways. U.S. Senate approves medical marijuana for military veterans, and it was Veterans Day just passed. Thank you, veterans out there, for serving your country. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, but it still has to get passed through the House, which is a fucking complete mess right now, and then it has to go to the president's desk, and this sh it should be fucking signed. So, I mean, it should just go through. It should just be passed. We should give all veterans that are part of the VA sh should be able to get uh, free cannabis through the pharmaceutical end of it through the VA. I I would you disagree with that, Mrs. We May? No. Caught you off guard there for a second, didn't <laughs> I? Did I was having a whole moment. <laughs> <laughs> like shoot, this I could really answer this really wrong. I, I have one of two options. <laughs> one of two. <laughs> I gotta pick one. That was a safe one. <laughs> so we're taking back looking to 50 years of marijuana research while previewing first future studies of terpenes and edibles. A new FDA document takes that look back. Tell us about it, Ms. Wee Mayim. Yep, they're looking back 50 years of marijuana research, but they are also previewing future studies. So for nearly as long as the federal government has classified marijuana as a Schedule I controlled substance, the FDA has been evaluating applications from researchers seeking to develop therapeutic drugs from the plant. In a pair of newly published documents, the agency looks back on more than half a century of investigational cannabis-based drugs and offers its perspective of what the future of drug development might hold. That includes studying a broader range of consumption methods, such as edibles, as well as investigating lesser-known cannabinoids and other components like terpenes. Over the past 50 years, 
FDA has evaluated more than 800 investigational new drug applications involving cannabis and cannabis-derived products, agency officials said in the journal Exploration of Medicine. That period has seen profound changes in the product form factors, cultural views, and the legal landscape around cannabis, all of which have been felt by the FDA. What began as a trickle of applications soon after the passage of the Federal Controlled Substance Act in 1970 has become a deluge in recent years, authors said, as more states legalize the drug for medical and adult use. The past decade alone has brought a nearly identical number of cannabis-related drug applications as the previous 40 years combined, and currently the agency is considering more than 150 active drug applications involving cannabis-based drugs and related synthetics. As times have changed, the FDA has stepped up its guidance for would-be cannabis research and drug makers. In 2016, it published a guidance document on botanical drug development, and early this year, the agency released a separate guidance document outlining the unique considerations around hemp and marijuana. The FDA continues to support robust scientific research needed to develop new drugs from cannabis, agency authors wrote in the Exploration of Medicine article. And the FDA is committed to supporting the development of new drugs through the new drug application and drug approval processes. New drug applications have typically focused on four major clinical er areas over the years, FDA said. The bulk of them, 53%, center on addiction and pain medicine, 19% involve neurology, 14% involve immunology and inflammation, and 9% involve psychiatry. Product form factors have also changed radically since evaluations of cannabis-based drugs began. Early on in the 1970s, new drug applications were mostly around smokable forms of marijuana, the FDA said. But as more types of products have been developed, fueled in part by state-level legalization, the ag agency has received more drug applications around oral, vaporized, and infused food products like baked goods and sweets. The past 10 years have brought product proliferation of new product types proposed for use in human clinical trials, as well as an increase in applications, the journal article says. The shift in cannabis delivery products, the FDA notes, is largely the result of cannabis consumers themselves. The emergence of interest in studying these various routes of administration under clinical trials is likely due to changes in the consumer in the United States, authors wrote. In recent years, consumers have transitioned from exclusively smoking dried cannabis flour to consuming other non-flour forms, such as edibles. Amid the changes, the FDA authors said that the challenges remain around developing cannabis-related drugs for clinical trials, especially around safety and the unknown qualities of lesser-known chemicals. They said, these research challenges include, but are not limited to, absent and or inadequate quality and manufacturing information, unknown safety profiles, and unknown benefits and risks for emerging compounds, and the complex matrix effects on testing of final product formulations. In addition to new products and form factors, they also expect the use of newly identified or less common cannabinoids, as well as other components of the cannabis plant, such as terpenes. Despite the shifting legal landscape and growing diversity of product types, research into cannabis remains difficult as a result of its Schedule I status, as well as laws specifically limiting study into marijuana. Changes are coming, though. Last year, the DEA finally ended a long-standing monopoly on marijuana manufacturing for research purposes domestically. The agency noted it's also implementing rules to streamline cannabis access for scientists, following the enactment of a cannabis research bill late last year. The DEA is currently carrying out a review of marijuana scheduling status after receiving a recommendation from the Department of Health and Human Services to move it from a Schedule I to Schedule Three drug. The FDA has approved a small number of cannabis-derived medications <clears throat> and similar synthetics, but the agency generally does not approve holistic or plant-based medicines, if marijuana was rescheduled as proposed following a scientific review by directed by 
uh, I'm sorry, following a scientific review directed by President Joe Biden, it would remain federally illegal except for medical use with a prescription from a doctor. Meanwhile, a top Democratic reintroduced a bill to federally legalize tax and regulate marijuana in September <clears throat> with provisions to expunge prior cannabis convictions. As for CBD, one of the few parts of cannabis plants that no longer is scheduled, uh, the FDA has been slow to issue rules following Congress's leg legalization of the cannabinoid through the 2018 Farm Bill. The FDA said it carried out a comprehensive review before reaching their January conclusion that they couldn't effectively regulate the complex market. The resulting uncertainty <clears throat> is widely blamed as a primary driver of the hemp industry's recent economic woes. It's also led to confusion within the marketplace as businesses continue to sell a widening variety of cannabis products, including intoxicating cannabinoids such as Delta-8 THC, without meaningful oversight. And while there is some disagreement about the scope of FDA's current regulatory authority, they largely agreed that Congress needs to take a more holistic approach to the issue and consider rules for all hemp-derived can cannabinoids, including Delta-8 THC. So that's where we're at, where we've been, and where we're headed. Where we're going. Well, we'll see. International news, Ireland, Ireland's first cannabis clinic opens four years after medical program launches. Despite the fact that Ireland legalized medicinal cannabis in June of 2019, the country had yet to open a medical clinic center, centering the needs of prospective patients until four now. Four years. Four years. Four, that's ridiculous. So they're saying it's a step forward for medical cannabis in Ireland. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see. Traces of cannabis in human bones suggest 17th century Italians were recreational pot users. Hey, it's in your blood. In my blood. Scientists examined nine femur bone samples from people who lived in 1600s uh, Milan. Uh, people have been consuming weed for a very long time. Ancient Greek historian wrote about flowers with the psychotropic effects in 440 BC, and med medical records from middle aged uh, middle ages in Europe show cannabis was widely administered to treat everything from gout, urinary infection, and, and birthing pains to weight loss, as well as being used as an anesthetic. In 1484, Pope Innocent passed a bull or decree labeling cannabis an unholy sacrament and banning its use among the faithful. During the time of the Inquisition, medicinal and hallucinogenic herbs were associated with magic and witchcraft. For the centuries that follow, there has been no hard evidence of its use. That is, until now, with the discovery of a team of forensic scientists in Milan, Italy, of traces of cannabis and remains of two skeletons from the 17th century. We know that cannabis has been used in the past, but this is the first study ever to find traces in human bones, says biologist and doctoral student Gia Giordano at the University of Milan's Laboratory of Forensic Anthropology and uh, Odontology and Laboratory of Toxicology and Investigation. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of a stuff. Lot of, yeah. <laughs> a lot of titles. Yes, this is an important finding because there are very few laboratories that can examine bones to find traces of cannabis. The study was published in December, issued in the peer-reviewed journal of archaeological and science. Uh, the goal of the study was to find traces of plants used for medicinal recreational purpose in the general population. That's cool. Um, I think that's amazing. Makes me happy. <laughs> he has another 10,000 skeletons dating back to ancient Roman times that they're going to do studies on the sea. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of bones. <laughs> German lawmakers propose uh, postpone marijuana legalization vote scheduled for next week, pushing proposed reform into 2024. Boo, Germany, boo. You were doing social clubs. You weren't even doing anything else. How hard it is to pass that stuff? Come on now. You were supposed to be like the forefront leader in Malta and Luxembourg. Still got you. They got you. And they're doing just fine. Empathy. Empathy. There's a good empathy, right? Um, I think most empathy is good. And then there's apathy, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we're not talking about that. We're talking I know. About empathy. I know. I get it. So what is cannabis and empathy? 
Well, the study shows regular users might have greater emotional understanding. Very cool. A study has found that people regularly using cannabis tend to have more empathy. Researchers from the Universidad Nacional Autonoma de Mexico found through brain imaging that the brain region generally affected by cannabis use and related to empathy, the anterior cingulate, had a stronger connectivity with regions related to sensing the emotional st states of others within one's own body. The anterior cingulate is present in the brain's limbic system, which involves emotional behavior. The study find, findings could help in exploring the potential effects of cannabis in aiding treatments for conditions involving deficits in social interactions, such as socio sociopathy, social anxiety, and avoidant personality disorder, among others, according to study co-author Victor Olald Matthew from the university. The study is published in the Journal of Neuroscience Research. The researchers recruited 85 regular cannabis users and 51 non-consumers as controls. The participants completed psychometric tests and were asked to report their cannabis consumption behavior through questionnaires. Of these participants, 46 users and 34 controls also participated in brain imaging studies. Of the total group, Cannabis users showed a greater ability to recognize and understand other people's emotions and impressions, as determined by the emotional comprehension part of the cognitive and affective empathy test, the researchers found. The test makes use of cognitive and affective approaches to measure an individual's empathetic capacity. The score differences were found to be greater in the samples that participated in the MRI testing, they said. Given that the anterior cingulate is one of the main brain areas heavily involved in the representation of the affective state of others, we believe that the differences shown by regular cannabis users in the emotional comprehens comprehension scores and their brain function connectivity could be related to the use of cannabis, the researchers wrote in their study. We believe that these results contribute to opening a pathway to study further the clinical applications of this positive effect that cannabis or cannabis components could have in effect and social interactions, they wrote. So I think that's pretty cool. Empathy. I wonder if they, if the study found that the empathy is only while you're using it or does it increase your awareness and carry over to your non-high moments oh that's a good I question you might, have to do some, you might have to do some research or is more of this is being studied yeah I have to look around Read on more. the topic yes yeah mrs weed man mr weed man i'm so bummed why because it's the end of the show oh <laughs> you got anything else to say well everybody we're leading up to some very busy times. The holiday season is approaching quickly. Um, we usually release our episodes on Thursdays, and some of you may not listen to it until the weekend or so. So if we don't catch up with you before Thanksgiving, I just want to send along a happy Thanksgiving if, if, you're, if you're celebrating. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We need a little happiness right now. We, we need, need some happiness in this some world. Some love. We need some forgiveness we need some patience we need some just love the world just needs to soften a little bit and show some empathy. very harsh right now. <laughs> smoke cannabis and, and, smoke yeah. some, and, and have some empathy it is uh i don't know i i it just uh i hope everybody out there is safe i hope everybody can be happy i hope everybody out there can be loved and just we need some kindness in this world and forgiveness. And maybe it would be a better place. I don't know. But all I know is this, is I love you all out there. And thanks for listening. As Polly always says, smoke smart. Puff, puff, and away. Puff, puff, puff. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats finished off with our 8 Decades logo. 
We've got some awesome, long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. Eight decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable. 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 Acceptable.